Hey, I'm Jade Halliwell, and this podcast is all about spilling the tea. I'll be showing you a little more to me than my life as a country artist, and also getting the tea from fellow artists and people in various industries who inspire and fascinate me. If you want to get some advice on self-love, hear about the musings of a songwriter, or understand what it takes to take a leap and start your own business, then this is the podcast for you. As casual as two friends sharing the goss over a glass of their favourite gin, pour one for yourself and join me as I find out what's the G and T. And welcome to episode four of What's the G and T with me, Jade Halliwell. Thank you so much for tuning in, for coming back on today's episode. I'm joined by the wonderful Laura Oakes. We'll be chatting all about her life as a songwriter and an artist, a time on tour with Tom Walker, what country music means to her and how we got to know each other. So pour yourself a drink and settle in. Hello and welcome to What's the G&T. This is episode four. Thank you for tuning in. And this week I am joined by the wonderful Laura Oaks. Hello. Welcome to Batley. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, thank you for coming. I feel like I just, I'm just i going to kick straight in with the gin because you've had a nightmare journey. So you come yeah. from Liverpool. Yeah. Should be straightforward. Straightforward. One change. But how many trains have you been on today? Four trains. Four trains. If that, oh. ain't, if that ain't commitment... To the chat and the gin. This is it, yeah. You know, I'm not even looking at you now. I'm just like looking at the gin behind <laughs> you. Know, last you. Like, time as well, <laughs> we, we recorded it a bit different last time, and uh, I had two hands. So, so now this is gonna go. I'll do them one at a time, I think. So I'll give you a glass. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I brought you a selection. Ooh. So you could have an orange flavored, yeah, or just a normal tankery. Which would you prefer? Oh, orange. Orange. Yeah. You see, I'm I'm excited you're here for the flavors. I'm so. When I was the bagging flavors. them up. Well, first of all, I should tell you, when I asked Laura to come on the um, episode, I said, and obviously we'll have a gin together, but you don't have to have the gin because some people might not want to have an alcoholic drink. Yeah. And she just texts back like, yeah, yeah, I'm up for it. Oh, and I will absolutely be drinking I'll the gin. I'll absolutely be drinking the gin. And I feel like you yeah. must be known for the gin because also when I was bagging up to bring it, I put some red wine in. I was like, she might not want a gin. And Luke was like, she'll want the gin. Yeah. She'll take the gin. So I will definitely take the I'm gin. Glad that's a fancy top, isn't it? Mm. Um, so excited by all of this. And I, I'm pouring lockdown measures here. You know, I, I don't really know. <laughs> Free hands I don't know what things. a measure is. <laughs> I've not ate for a good few hours as well, so. <laughs> is that a lot? I think that's like. <laughs> <laughs> is that too much? Do you want me to share it? I mean. One? In my defense, I couldn't see the bottle. <laughs> I mean, 50% gin, 50% tonics is what you want, isn't it? <laughs> and I've upped my game. I've actually got fever tree tonics. Very posh. So if you've been watching, you'll know that I've been um, I've been pouring Tesco tonic for the past few episodes. Through no fault of my own. They didn't have fever tree. I'm very excited by um, fever tree. Right, let I'm going to let you taste let it. Because if that tastes awful, I know to go easy on mine. <laughs> I love that. Let me be the guinea pig for it. Then you can make yourself the perfect measure. <laughs> that horrendous. Oh, now it's nice. Oh, right, I'm it's in. It's strong. I'm in. <laughs> Where it's nice. So, um, do you want me to help you? Let me put mine you down. You know what? I think we'll have to invest in like a little trolley. I tried this last time. I went in Tesco. <gasps> get a drink. And there's trolley. a little drinks trolley you could push on. I'm thinking we'll get Luke in a little bellboy hat. Yeah. Push the little trolley on. Oh, be perfect. love it. <laughs> I'm very sad that's not happening in my episode, actually. When the drinks trolley is a thing and Luke's can come a back. waiter, then I'll come back. Is that a lockdown measure? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just keep rolling with it. <laughs> what the glass is there for that's the problem in it with the big glasses we must want you to fill them no, i'm here to fill it because <laughs> they would not make them this size if they didn't want you to fill it did you find through lockdown like you were the same like were you just your measures suddenly were different from what you drink in the pub oh, every day yeah i never used to drink at home and then march 2020 same, came around yeah i never really mm. and then and then it'd be like two and o'clock and that weird heat wave we had that was like yeah you're in lockdown but here's a bit of sunshine <laughs> so we had that and it'd be like mid-afternoon i'd be in the garden drunk yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> just a little reminder that if you are enjoying the show you can catch a visual version of this episode up on my youtube on wednesday at 6 p.m go ahead and search for jade hello hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it 
<laughs> well, thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for having me. When I, when I started this, I always knew I wanted you to be a guest. One, because I feel like you're my friend now, but obviously, as you know, I'm a bit of a fangirl for you. <laughs> and you were one of the first, I think I touched on this in the first episode, that when I was trying to get into the country scene and seeing what was happening in the UK, there were only a handful of artists around who I felt were like UK artists putting on shows and writing their own music. And you were definitely like one of those artists. And I used to come and watch you at a Porto when you lead stairs. I remember that. <laughs> I remember meeting you at a Porto. Yeah. I, every now and then it pops up on my uh, memories and that I've actually stopped sharing it now because I'm like, it's too embarrassing because I'm <laughs> proper like grinning at the side of you with my friend and you know it was like you used to play midweek and my friend worked yeah. nine five and it was a thing to get a nine five or out midweek but she was there I was Emily she was very honest <laughs> was I got a nine to five or out in the middle of the week <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, uh, I I love your music I've loved it for a long time but for anyone who hasn't seen you before um can you just kind of little introduction of Maybe your introduction into country music and the UK scene. Well, to, I listened to your first episode actually, and it was so nice to listen to because, like, obviously, like we know each other and like we kind of we all chat and kind of know a bit about how everyone got started and stuff. Mm. But listening to that episode because it was just you talking about how you got into it was like so similar to like how got how I got into it. Yeah. Um, and I loved it because I think that's so, like in the in the uk country scene so many of us have the same story yeah. that we like discovered it i discovered it when i was like it kind of always been in the family because you know there's musicians in my family but you're like the von traps i've been to your we, family parties you've been to family parties I've witnessed so you know your family. yeah that's the thing it's nothing <laughs> like there's no like oh she's a singer or you know nothing's like out of the ordinary it's just like well it's weirder in our family if you don't sing it's like <laughs> yeah. why don't you sing <laughs> what's wrong with you um so yeah so you know you've been you know what it's like but that kind of that I've always I'd always sang um and country music had been around because kind of that that Liverpool kind of Irish family connection yeah. thing like there's a lot of country music like in it um so stuff like Patsy Cline um and all that kind of era of country was around a lot but I didn't even didn't really register that it was country music and this is different yeah. to it because I'd grown up around it um but kind of it like kicked off for me when I was about 13 14 maybe um purely by chance they used to show American Idol on ITV2 a couple of weeks behind it going out in America and the year I started watching it Carrie Underwood was was on it. That was her year, and obviously in America it was no nothing out of the ordinary for them to be singing Martina McBride songs and the yeah. Chick songs and stuff. But I'd never heard anything like it before, and was just like, just something about it just got me. Like no other music had got me before. It just yeah. really like spoke to me as soon as I heard it, um, and like good old days of like youtube when it was in its infancy like that was me only route to listening yeah I was to what same, was like, happening youtube and the recommended list and yeah i used to order cds off amazon and weirdly they seemed to take ages to come then i don't know if they were bloody imported or something but, no, but same <laughs> like i used to go into the the country section in hmv in liverpool at the time was like guarded off <laughs> like in a little room on its own because like no one would go Be in ashamed. there yeah it was like <laughs> you must walk through the door of shame <laughs> to get to the country section and it was tiny at the time and I all every week I'd go in there and like you pay well over the odds anyway for the for a CD because yeah. it was imported from America <laughs> and there was like one of them in the country yeah. and it'd just be me every week in there going up to the counter being like is this Carrie Underwood album coming out in like two <laughs> weeks time please can you order it in and they'd have to order in yeah stuff for me because it was it wasn't just like in a shop the way it is now yeah um and obviously streaming I'm old enough to <laughs> predate streaming. <laughs> I know, um, I'm saying, saying this on that podcast. Like, when I started singing and I got my first recording, I'm that old that it was on a cassette. Right. Yeah. And you used to wind it up with a little pen in the middle. Did. <laughs> Forgot about that. The streamers don't know. <laughs> they they don't do not know. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was. So it was like, I mean, it's come a, a long way, the country scene now, Definitely. but that's kind of. It was just purely by chance that something about it like I was starting to sing anyway um but I'd never really thought about singing country before um just absolutely loved it and I think it was the it was a songwriting 
and the storytelling that just really spoke to me at the time. Yeah. Um, so because of that, I was like, I want to learn to play guitar because if I can play guitar, I can... I don't even know if I really ever remember like how I started writing songs or like even had the confidence to be like at 14, I can do this as well. Yeah. It was just like, they were diary entries basically. It's like so many people start out. It was just like the stuff I didn't know how to process or say when I was yeah. growing up. Just felt really easy to put it in a song. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really ever intended on anyone even hearing them at first. It was just like something purely for me to just sit and do because I just loved singing and music so much. Um, yeah, and then it sort of... And that's kind of still where it's based in now. Yeah. It's just, it's escalated very, <laughs> very quickly. You're not writing your diary anymore. It's yeah. out there. But that's the thing. The Songwriting still feels like that. Like it's, it's kind of, you do it in different ways now, but like always, I think at the heart of it is just like that initial, like the reason you want to write a song still yeah. kind of remains. It's just all the stuff that I can't process otherwise yeah it's easy to do it in song, in song form yeah i think that like that's something you know my thoughts on your song i, I think like, that's something like you do so well like i love your writing style to the point that i remember um for anyone who doesn't know my song um if i were you isn't actually my song laura oaks wrote this one and i remember we we're at millport and you was like i've got a song i've been thinking i was like i'll have it yeah I hadn't even heard it, but because I just admire your writing style so much um, and that storytelling aspect, like you say, of it, that I, I knew I'd like the song. And then when you yeah. said the demo, me and Luke were like, I mean, th that demo sounded like you could release that yourself as it was <laughs> anyway. We used to have it on in the car. We were like, this is great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love that that storytelling aspect of your writing. And yeah, you, you've had quite a few different people like cut some of your rights, haven't you? Yeah, um, and that kind of, that's what, I, that's my favorite thing that's developed about songwriting that I kind of didn't realize when I first started doing it is like the journey that it can go on from where the song starts. Um, and that definitely happened with If I Were You, like that song started out as something I thought I was writing for myself. Like I remember having the idea and being like, I like this as a song for me as an artist. And then kind of as we were writing it, I was like, I still love this song, but I was just like, doesn't feel like mine, yeah. but I love the song. Um, and then kind of like when I sit and listen to the demo, I was like, I love this song, but I don't think it's, it's not for me. Like it's not, I'm not gonna do it the justice. And then I thought of you and I was like, actually, you this is like a song for you like because I just knew you would just absolutely like smash the vocal on it which you did it's like when you first sent me the demo well the recording of your version I was like yeah <laughs> this is who this song is meant to be sung by um and I love that kind of that bit of songwriting where it's like there's never it doesn't have to be like it, it doesn't have to be where it starts off at. It can yeah. have like this lovely journey that you don't even ever expect it to have. Yeah. Um, yeah, and thank you very much for oh, thank you. taking like, that song. I, I love, love listening. I love listening to your version of that oh, as well. Thank you. Um, but yeah, kind of the, the songwriting kind of stuff, like I've been lucky to have like other artists like in the scene and a couple of pop artists like cut some stuff that I've written which is always so lovely um like I feel like sometimes in a way as a songwriter it's a bigger compliment for another artist to be like oh what you've said here I believe in so much that I want to spend you know years hopefully yeah. singing it to other people yeah. um kind of and you know there's two ways of doing it like the way that we did it with If I Were You like the song had been written and I kind of said to you, do you, do you like it? Do you want to sing it? Yeah. Um, which is always amazing when people are like, yes, I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would love to sing this song. Um, but even kind of, you know, when you are the writer and you know in the session, you are not the artist. Like yeah. you are right. There's another artist in the room with you and you're writing for them. Yeah. When, when you eventually, you know, get an email or a text like months later saying, I'm going to release this or I'm going to put it on an album yeah. or whatever. That's just, again, so, so nice um, because I feel like as a as a co-writer, when you're not the artist, you're always, it's like a challenge to kind of like work out what the artist is trying to say yeah. and you have to get them 
as close to where they want to go with the song as possible. Yeah. Um, and when they cut it and release it, it's just like, oh, we got yeah, there. Right, right. Like the hat. Yeah. Like, and it's kind of. Yeah, I just I just love that mm. about it's it. It's almost like you're like acting it like when you're in a room and you're writing for someone else. You you switch into their mindset and like yeah. their personality. Yeah, because you want to write from what they would say or what. Would, and I think like you say in songwriting, in co-writes, it's so important as well as a writer to be able to if you are writing for yourself to speak up and kind of say, well, I wouldn't say that word or I wouldn't use yeah. that phrase. I wouldn't say something that way. So it's definitely a challenge, like you say, to write with someone and and switch into their outlook on a song and, and, yeah. and get it right so yeah that's great I mean we wrote one together a couple of months ago on yes, Zoom did, yeah. yeah I actually played that for the first time at Country on the Clyde someone um, actually <laughs> messaged me and said oh I've just heard the song oh, really? and Jade wrote it together <laughs> yeah I was so happy that you played it live just a little reminder that if you are enjoying the show you can catch a visual version of this episode up on my YouTube on Wednesday at 6pm go ahead and search for Jade Hallowell hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it yeah I was like because I think when you write together you like I loved that song and I've got loads of ideas for it yeah um but you you don't know how it's going to be until you play it out in front of an audience yeah. and like you play it live because you can play it in your bedroom and you're demoing it. But I played it there and yeah, it got a good response, but I definitely have to uh, figure out. I tried to take on both the backing vocals and the main vocal at the end. So I was like, <laughs> at the end of it, when you were doing it live, oh my God, you must have been completely out of breath because I, like, I know how that song finished. I'm going to figure out how we do that live. We're going to keep doing that. <laughs> but that's like, and I mean, what's, so great about you when you write songs with you is you know what you want like when you come into the session you are so great about like your ideas are always amazing um and you're really good at being like yes i do like that maybe let's try something else um and that's so good as the writer when you're not the artist as well like that's exactly what you want yeah. like and yeah i love writing with you you're always like so on it (laughs) thank you very much um yeah, and I think like you say, like a song can be different. Cause I, one of my favorite songs of yours is Dreaming, which is I know is an oh oldie. God, yeah. But I remember, I always thought of that as a love song. And I remember watching you play around and you spoke about how that was kind of your thoughts on like a country world, and, like the UK having a country scene. Yeah. And how you've been dreaming of it and it come along. And I thought, I love that. Like, I love how a song to different people can have a completely different meaning. Yeah. Because to me, I was listening to it and I was like, oh, this is a really nice love song. I mean, yeah. I was like, whoa, she just this <laughs> on its head. Layers. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I'm questioning everything. <laughs> but that song, like, you know, talking a little bit before about like the beginning of the UK country scene. That, I mean, I don't, I don't think I played that song live. I haven't played that song live for ages. I'm going and back I, to the Apollo days here. Like, say, I was the, like, the, in case I yeah. come across, I'm an absolute fangirl. And it must be 2015, maybe? You were at uni so, yeah. you in Leeds when you used to play that. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's a while ago. Yeah, I remember I used to watch you playing that song there, and I was like, I've got, I had your EP at home. I used to have it in car, like, oh, God. <laughs> I, I had it on my, because it's how far back we're going, iPod. Used yes, to get the train the and plug my little iPod in. I love like, that. Dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> but that, like, that song, like, when I think about when I wrote that song, like, I think I just, I think I just left uni, and like, the UK scene was starting to become a thing. Like, people were starting to find each other. Yeah. When we'd all just been sat in our own little corners of the world, like, <laughs> thinking we were the only ones yeah. listening to it in the UK, and I just like. Yeah, it just when I when I do listen back to that song, like I can just hear how much like excitement is in it. That I'm just like, oh my god, this thing I never ever thought would ever happen. Like I didn't th- like growing off. Like there was no way I thought country music was gonna be where it is today. Yeah, here. Like I, I'm still just like, how how do we have this amazing scene that we're all part of? Um, yeah. So I listening back to that song is funny because I can just hear like it, we were all at the very beginning yeah of like the the journey that country's gone on in the UK and Definitely. just like the excitement that you can so clearly hear <laughs> like in that song is just like yeah very oh. cute <laughs> so you like you say like it's grown a lot since then you played C to C the other weekend yeah so do you think like 
let's go back to like 14, 15 year old Laura. <laughs> Would your mind be blown thinking you're like you're playing a festival out with so many people who just oh, love fully. country? <laughs> yeah. I was actually thinking this on stage as well on at C to C. It was our last set of the weekend on the Sunday. And kind of we were like kind of coming to the end of the set and I was like, right, okay, it's gone well. I can kind of have a minute to just like really <laughs> take it in. Yeah. And it's just it's so mad like I, I wrote a song that I released a couple of years ago. it was the title of my EP called How Big Is Your World um and that song is kind of all about just being still completely in awe like every single day that I get to do this yeah um you know kind of from growing up just thinking there's no way any like wouldn't this be amazing but kind of having a very real head on my shoulders at like yeah. 14 and 15 and being like, but there's no way this is actually ever going to happen. Yeah. And then it, it happening. Um, I'm just being like, oh, yeah. how how did I get this lucky to be part of like this scene? Um, but yeah, C2C was amazing. Um, and I think because we've had so long away from it, obviously mm. it hasn't ran for like the last two years. Yeah. It was just, I really like to kind of it's the first gig I think I've probably really done of me original stuff where I've been like you know there's been that many people there and everyone's yeah. been so so up for just all being together yeah. again um and it was just yeah it was quite quite a thing it was a, yeah. bit, a bit emotional we just had, being like um, oh we're back yeah I can imagine yeah we had um Gary Quinn and um Carl Hancock were on the yeah. last episode and Gary had played at C2C as well. And I said, what yeah. was it like? Like, could you feel like the buzz in the air? Could you could you sense in London that? Because we, we went out to the Glasgow one, but we only caught like a couple of people on the night because we were doing the country on the Clyde event and the after parties. Yeah. I said, in London, could you feel that buzz like through the day, like the stage, like everyone's back? And Gary said, he went to the songwriters out on Thursday, said mm. and immediately you could tell like everyone was ready for that yeah. weekend after two years of not going. Yeah. It was just, you could feel it in the air that people were like, we're back. You, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, same. I felt it like from the second I walked out on stage, so I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. I'm like, um, it's <laughs> uh, we're, we're all home. Like, and it just felt so nice and like really weird that nothing, it was like nothing had ever happened. Yeah. And I think people needed that actually to just be there and feel like not even be thinking about what, you know, stuff that's yeah. happened or why it couldn't happen like the last two years. It was just like so feel good and amazing. Yeah. Um, and just really nice to be back, do we know? Hey guys, just a shameless plug to remind you that I am running a Kickstarter campaign. The campaign ends on April the 21st, and if I haven't hit the target in that time, I don't get a penny. Every single penny counts, so please, if you have got some spare money, or you want to get involved, or see what's going on, go ahead and follow my Instagram at jadehellowellofficial, where you will see many posts on there, and how you can get involved and help me bring my EP that I have in my head to life. like you said like we've, so we've been off for two years for the pandemic and throughout then you released your ep which how weird that the title just seemed to sync so well with the timing I know. The how big is your world EP? Yeah. and at that time like physically our worlds were as big as our bloody living rooms Lit they? And like literally the way we were yeah living. um but i love i love that ap and obviously it's got my Thank favorite you. song ever on learn to be lonely yeah. my mom's <laughs> i think you signed my mum a birthday ep did you remember Still I did. like pride of place. Yeah. <laughs> um, but through when well, you released that through the pandemic, I think especially that song kind of made people stop and think, and because you did kind of look back at what what is important. Like obviously it was awful that everything was shut down, but the things that were important were your family, like your friends, your health. Yeah. Like definitely having a roof over his head still. Like, yeah. Especially I think as musicians, like to wake up one day and have your entire diary cancelled, <laughs> and wonder how uh -huh. you're going to make any money. Um, the world seemed a little bit small then, but That's, you, you still released the EP and people loved it. How it, did you find releasing in the pandemic? It felt, just that title alone, mm. it felt so unlucky. <laughs> At, like that week I was just like, well, this is the worst possible thing it could be called, isn't it? Um, 
But I think that worked really well. I think like, it was the best thing it could have been In the called. end, it like, it really, it kind of... It was like you knew it was a coming. I was like, I know. yeah. Then it was quite weird. I was like, oh my, like, did I did I foresee this when I was writing it? Um, but it was a weird one because it felt like really unlucky at the time. And obviously, like you say, everything just got cancelled and we'd been because we'd known the EP was coming out in March, you know, 2020. From like the September, October, the year before, we'd been building and building and building yeah. up to that moment so like and then to have all of that stuff just gone yeah like that would build up to um yeah just felt <laughs> so unlucky at the time but like you say the thing that again what i love about songs is that it can be written about one thing and then as you live with it and things happen they take on totally new meanings yeah. um and that song obviously was like the idea of that came to me because I was I felt so lucky to get to physically travel to all of these amazing places because of what I do for a living yeah. um but I th the real heart of that song anyway was that you actually don't need to physically go anywhere for your world to be huge like if your mind's open yeah to accepting stuff and people kind of you can just be in your living room yeah. and you're your actual world can be massive because yeah. like you said we were all sat in just our living rooms <laughs> and gardens for like a year yeah and it was some of the best of humanity i've ever experienced Definitely. at that time yeah when no one could go anywhere and there was no holidays or travel or you know things to go and do it was just people getting each other through definitely and that actually when you think about the song in in that respect it's like oh actually it really well it right. fit really well and yeah. but i just love that about songs where they just take on yeah these new meanings that you didn't even know yeah. was in there i think it was always what i was trying to get to with it but i kind of didn't even realize that that's actually what i was trying to say yeah. until it happened in real life yeah. like two years after <laughs> writing it and i was like oh thanks world yeah, <laughs> this is actually what yeah. i was trying to say um yeah, so kind of what felt very unlucky at the time actually ended up making a lot of sense. Yeah. In a, and I in think a way. That in general with like lockdowns and stuff, like it when it first happened, I think we were all like scared and it's one of those weird things, isn't it? Like I think whoever you talk to like in years and years to come, everyone's gonna remember where they were when the world went into lockdown. Oh like when God, yeah. when that notice yeah. went out, like I myself know I was on a hot tub weekend. Um, in North York, that must have really put a damper on <laughs> things. You know, it was so right. So we um, we got there and um, we went for a meal in the afternoon. And this this guy served us, and he was very professional. I was like, "What can I get you? Like, uh, if you could sanitize your hands on the way in, blah blah blah." Yeah. And because um, we went to be in Dublin, but it got cancelled because it was like the start of things shutting down. So we went there, and the plan was to stay in the Friday night, and then the next night go out into the town. And we got back on the Friday, that's when Boris Johnson came on and said at midnight tonight, all bars and clubs yeah. will be shut. So we were like, we best go out tonight, make the most of it last night. Yeah. So we went back to the bar where we'd eaten and at that point, the, the manager was like, help yourself. Like it was drunk, yes. he was like, the world's ending. I don't care what happens. We were picking <laughs> each other up and like laying us across back, throwing the pump down people's neck and stuff. He was spraying people with champagne, like it was, absolute carnage like end of the world if e4 did a, did a program about the end of the world that's what it looked like in that bar that's and i wasn't on like a a weekend with my friend i was like my mum and my auntie like, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's just like a family that event. sounds much more <laughs> epic than my, that very same day my version of that was i'd driven to a gig that announcement had happened mid drive to the gig Ooh venue had closed by the time I got there <laughs> so <laughs> flash forward to me then sat in my car crying my eyes out because I knew that, that was it <laughs> but this like really <laughs> amazing like film moment happened where like it was just starting to go dark I got back in my car I was like oh my god it's now illegal to do my job and yeah I love what I do so I got very emotional about that turned my car back on and I have nothing by Whitney Houston came on the radio <laughs> as it was going dark and 
the street just sort of like completely emptied. So I'm like mid cry, Whitney's <laughs> singing. And then a full on spot, like all the street lights came on and this like floodlight came shining through the car. Stop at that like at the chorus moment and I was just like I ended up laughing my head off in my car because I was just like where's this like dramatic film like, moment um, come from what's that Hilary Duff film where <laughs> that's exactly the energy I where, was getting like yeah. 2006 Disney special yeah, yeah that was it and then I absolutely loved it so it was like <laughs> it was very very emo emotional roller coaster yeah. of a moment Whitney singing I'm crying Whitney as well People are walking past the car being like, is she okay? <laughs> and then I ended up laughing my head off because it was so perfect. Hi guys, just a little reminder that you are listening to What's the G and T with me, Jade Halliwell. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the show, to hit the subscribe button or the follow button if you are listening on Spotify and Apple Music. <laughs> oh, I love a bit Whitney. <laughs> we went to... Um... <laughs> Denmark on the Dash Nights yeah. uh, tour, Eon. Um, and one of the nights, um, Stefan came in and he said, well, Trick wants to go to karaoke tonight, but, and Luke were like, Jade loves drunk karaoke. <laughs> yeah. Luckily we didn't go, because I don't think I'd be going back if we had gone, I'd have been <laughs> on my knees trying to give my best witness. I'd have also been so jealous <laughs> that you went to karaoke without me. Oh, I know. So obviously I, you, we were meant to be on the tour together yeah. this time, but you've been there a, before me and um, yeah. those guys love you Aww. like Trick and Blue that we were backstage and um, we were all chatting and Trick was like saying him and his wife like just want to take you and adopt you <laughs> <laughs> and Trick like, and Laurie are so so lovely Laura and uh, we were all like, about Learn to Be Lonely they were like what a song and me and Luke were like what a song and we came back oh, after nice. the first um, writer's round that like we'd done. Came yeah. back in, they said, we're going to do one more at the end. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. And Luke came in and was like, you didn't sing Telephone? And I was like, yeah, because like, it's like sad song in a writer's round. And, and Luke was like, no, you should definitely do Telephone. Yeah. And they were like, what's Telephone? And Luke went, um, it's Jay's version of Learn to Be Lonely. And they were like, <laughs> you got to do that song. <laughs> that's such an amazing song as well oh thank you it is such an amazing song and i saw a clip of you singing that at bartoff station yeah that, that was the night in was like, denmark oh, <laughs> and you just absolutely killed it like oh, people were you. literally hanging off every single word thank that you, you were singing but did you felt like when you were over there like the crowds in denmark that's so nice wow. aren't they yeah. I could not believe it. Like, And every time I've been over, I'd like at first I was just like, oh, maybe these are just like a really good audience as a one-off. But no matter where you go in the country, because the first tour we did over there was weird. Like it was in the middle of what was lockdown for us. It was August and September of 2020. And I just started to completely write off. <laughs> Sorry. That was a great save. I, I just, went for a drink like, boom. I just Apologies. loved seeing the fear in your eyes of you almost spilling gin <laughs> over the mic, but then recovering. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't style it out. Um, yeah, so that kind of became like a little, I'd completely written off like just writing, uh, playing live at all in 2020. Yeah. And then like six days before the tour started, got a call from Stefan who I'd never met before would just chatted about me doing a festival over there another time um and he was like the tour's like three weeks long and it starts in six days can you please just come over to Denmark having not been anywhere for like six months the only you know I've, I'd been around no one I'd just been in me house yeah. like um and then yeah like five days later was on a plane going wow. to Denmark and just like that, that, I think with what we do, because like before kind of lockdown, like we were just like, all, like all of us were on the go all the time, like yeah. traveling to loads of different places, meeting loads of different people, like, and just being in that constant state of just like, you know, especially with co-writing, like you're walking into rooms every week with people you've never met before. And yeah. you just have that shorthand of like getting on really quickly yeah. and gigging the same. And then to have not done that, for like, you know, half a year. I remember just being sat on the plane being like, wait, what? This is weird. Like what, <laughs> what am I doing? Like just yeah. going to another country to play music. And honestly, it was like the best tonic for that year ever. Like to actually get out and play to audiences that listen to everything, but are so receptive as well. Like normally with 
quiet listening audiences. Like, it's not like they're reserved. They're just listening. Yeah, yeah. But then they're so lovely and vocal about the stuff they like. They're just oh, the perfect audiences. And because that tour is a writer's round tour as well. It's just, they're my favorite shows to play. Just yeah. like anywhere, anyway. Because you can have that connection so much more than you would normally, you know, at a festival or like a headline set where there's that kind of, you know, it's an up kind of full band yeah. kind of thing. So there's that separation. Um, but with, yeah, Rice's Round stuff, you can kind of, there's almost no barrier between you yeah. and the audience, which I just love. They're my favorite shows to play and they're my favorite shows to go and watch as well. Like I yeah. love when you see, I was talking about this the other day, actually, when you just see the writer sing the song that they wrote for someone else, like, yeah. I just love that so much. I think it's so special. People through, yeah. through those rounds. Like, we, me and Luke love listening to Jesse Alexandra's EP. Yeah. She's like, I drive your truck and mine will be you. And like, yeah. you would, I would have never really known who she was if I hadn't have seen her at the C2C Songwriters Night. And yeah. then, like I say, I'm a fangirl, so I did stalk her all week and I watched every <laughs> single set she did and queue up for a CD. Um, <laughs> I love that. I actually queued up for a CD and they'd, they'd run out of them by the time I got there. And I was oh, like, what? oh, and one of her team must have took pity on me. And then she was like, wait, took one out of a handbag and was like, you can take this. That's <laughs> I amazing. I still got it at home. But, and I, I love her. I love her writing. Like, what an incredible writer. Yeah, but, oh, like absolutely. Like you say, I, would, I wouldn't have known of her if I hadn't been to those kind of gigs. Yeah. And I think that's one of the beauties of a writer's round. Is you, oh, totally. And you'll hear someone play something and you're like, I know this song. I didn't know yeah. they wrote that. And then... Um, you, you're just looking back over the catalogue on like Spotify. But yeah. And the good thing obviously at Spotify at the minute has those like written by playlists now. Yeah, it? which is such a good feature. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with some of my favorite shows are the, are the writers round. Yeah. That's the thing like, it works so well that in Denmark and we couldn't believe it. Like the crowds and like, I'm, I feel like I'm a bit of an oversharer, but in on stage, like I don't feel like I'm someone who like cries on stage or like, really opens it like I'm there to, to perform yeah but going over there was a little bit I'd never been to Denmark before and you'd like told me how amazing like all the guys were on the tour and like how amazing the audiences were um but I was still a little bit nervous thinking will my music translate like, will yeah. people and especially with this accent like <laughs> it's harder <laughs> from talking people understanding me so I was like will will it come across like especially in a writer's round because half of it is singing and half of it is speaking and joining yeah. in with who else is on stage yeah. and, and and just being I think like having like your barriers down and letting people really see you yeah uh, it's really it's like a quite a vulnerable thing oh I think the same as bit. well yeah yeah kind of when I first started doing them as well like that was the bit I love it now but I struggled with it first because yeah. like you say same like you are normally if you haven't come up doing writer's rounds like yeah. you're like i'm on stage this is what i say like yeah. and it's much more of a performance thing even when you're talking yeah but with writer's round all of that goes out the window yeah and it is just you and it's so exposing yeah. and it feels like very like a vulnerable place to be definitely yeah but when you get an audience like the ones that are in Dem denmark and here like we have so so many amazing listening audiences yeah. in the UK as well. Oh God, yeah. But when you get a real like an audience that wants to know the story and will listen to it, yeah, like it's so nice. But it's just like, oh, everyone's listening to like, you know, and it can be stuff that you've never told anyone else. Like at them shows, like people are getting to hear things that you've never said out loud before. Yeah. And I also think the really great opportunities, like I say, I played the song that we wrote, um, at Country on the Clyde and the Writers Round. The great yeah. opportunities to try out songs that you've just written. Yeah. Um, and see like how people respond to them and how they sound like out live, like rather than just in your bedroom to yeah. go in them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really, that, that night, the first night at, at Band of you, you saw the video when I played Telephone. Yeah. People were like deadly silent. It was mad, like deadly silent and then like standing up at the end and I just couldn't help and I cried on stage and I came off to Luke. I was like, I have never Aww. in my 31 years of life cried on stage like that. But I couldn't, I couldn't so speak. Nice I was trying to say thank you. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was well awkward. And even Gary <laughs> Queer was at the side of me. Like it was nice to have like a familiar fit. And he yeah. was like, tapping me was like, <laughs> and I came off to Luke. I was like, 
that's humiliating. <laughs> and it was no, like, I think that's no, it's lovely. not. It was like, it's real. And like, it is real. Get hit. But yeah. I, was like, I was just so overwhelmed yeah. by the reaction. And I think, but I've had similar things like in the UK. We did, um, do you remember you joined us on the song swap with Gary Quinn and Kezia yeah. during I loved lockdown? Doing that. Yeah. that was so fun, wasn't that it? That was loads lockdown. of fun. And we did one at Buckle and Boots and it was outside in a tent. It was packed out, but it was silent when you were playing. I was mad and I was yeah. like, it's weird because I love, like, because I'm so pop country, I love the live full band performance. Yeah. And being able to just, like, take off an instrument and bounce about and dance and perform, like, all my nine year old pop star dreams I coming true. <laughs> but <laughs> I also love just sitting with a guitar yeah. and just being really open with people. And I think yeah. that's probably the thing that people connect to most as an audience member oh they definitely can, like, listen to your songs yeah and, like i said like learn to be lonely is you know what i need to tell you this actually right now i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna drop him in it um you know i love that song Luke yeah. loves that song we recently moved in together yeah not a night goes by we don't go to bed he locks the door turns to me and sings I always check the lock. I'm like, stop singing it. It's been two months. Stop singing that line to me. Every that. night, every night when we go to bed, he sings. I know. I don't even look at him. I know it's coming. I'm just like up the steps. I, I always check. Shut up. That actually makes me want to cry. Like <laughs> every night. That makes so writing that song like, so worth yeah. it. Now I know that. But it's. <laughs> Like, I mean, he's an idiot. <laughs> but that is such, that to me, that is songwriting, like those really real human moments. Yeah. And I felt that like, so obviously our looks have been on tour this week. Yeah. And I've had to lock the door every night and like, I've been a bit OCD with it and taken the key to bed. I don't know what the key in bed's gonna do for me. My mum's advice yeah. was, I'm gonna drop it. My uh, mum's advice was to take a knife to bed. <laughs> oh, that's a totally- <laughs> like, That's extreme, I'll just take the key, but I don't know what the key's doing because yeah. if they're well, in, they don't need the key by then. Do you know what I mean? They're already in the house. So I don't know why the key yeah. in bed. Uh, but also don't home. don't sleep with a knife in your bed that sounds like all it, kinds of out. like yeah more i think i should get a bat for under the bed <laughs> instead or something it tours a lot do you know what i mean yeah and i have to lock the door and i'm like yeah i get it i don't want to be lonely either <laughs> well in learn to be lonely part two <laughs> You're the knife in the bed a knife under <laughs> maybe bed. that's verse one of the second half of that song <laughs> <laughs> I'll like I'll let you know when it's when it's done. You keep your date, I'll let you know she'll be happy. <laughs> but it is like with those songs, like it is those very real things <laughs> that like kind of like I always say when I'm telling this story on stage, like you don't even realise those things are happening until they stop happening. Yeah. And that was the thing for um Obviously, for anyone who hasn't heard the song, it's a song about. I was kind of inspired by uh, my dad having to go into hospital when he got ill um, a few years ago, uh, and he had always, for thirty years, locked the front door at night. And then the first night he went into hospital, my mum had to be the person to lock the front door, and that was her. That was the bit that brought it home to her. Yeah. Like, what if he's potentially not? Ever, like, this is going to be. It, like that brought it home yeah. to her he was fine as well by the way yeah. just to say just as you know a, a nice happy <laughs> you know tying that story of happy <laughs> um but it is those those things and the amazing thing about writing that song i wrote it with just an absolute legend and gift to songwriting beth nielsen chapman um and it was one of those lovely songs where you don't even you're not meant to write that song that day mm we were just talking about it like we hadn't even started the official like what shall we yeah. write about we were just talking before it and then it just very naturally like segued into oh maybe this is what we're yeah. actually going to write about um and I think that's why it ended up being so honest and having those little things in it um because it started as a, as a conversation actually, yeah um and I read, we just, we taught, it felt like that day we wrote that song, like it was like an 80% talking and then like 20% actually like yeah. singing or writing anything. Um, but I, yeah, I kind of, I love 
when my favorite thing ever is when people connect to that song yeah um especially because where it came from um and to kind of play it live and hear like everyone's got one of those stories and so many people when i've played at a gig will come up to me and like share something about you know their mom and dad or their relationship and be like oh you know my dad used to do this for my mom and i think it's the biggest compliment ever as a songwriter to something that feels so personal to you for so, that to trigger something in yeah, someone else as well definitely um it's just like the whole i mean like we, at the very beginning like we were saying like that's the whole reason we write songs anyway definitely for me like i wanted to feel connected to people so i would write things down and when yeah. i listen to my favorite songwriters like that's what i want from them as well i want to feel like yeah. they understand what i'm going through even when I think no one else in the whole world could be feeling this way yeah and then you hear a song and it's like oh no actually that person feels like that as well um and I just yeah I feel very lucky with that song that you know it it connects with people in the way it does thank you and like I said my mum loves it and again going off that like different outlooks of it so that's like about like you say, your mum and your dad's relationship. Yeah. But that came out around not not much longer as after my mum lost her mum. Mm. So she sees it as a song like about yeah. her mum, like because they were like really close. Oh. And I think again, that's the beauty of a songwriting that someone else can take it and connect to it in a different way, but yeah. they're still connecting to your words yeah. and what you've written. But to them, it means something different. And I think yeah. that's, I love that in songwriting. I know when um. When I wrote Telephone, I wrote that about my grandma. Um, yeah. And then I finished it when I lost my granddad. <laughs> um, and I put really personal details because I wasn't, as you mentioned earlier, you didn't intend to, for some of the things to be heard in yeah. the early days. Yeah. I didn't intend for this to be heard until um, I played it on a live stream just after I lost my granddad. And I thought, I'll do it on live stream and then never play it again. And yeah. then people want me to release it. But because I'd written it for myself, I'd tied so many personal details into it. So, like, one of the things I always laugh at is my grandma used to come over to my house every Sunday and we'd talk about what was on the TV. Like, we both love, like, call the midwife and stuff yeah. like that. And she'd say, like, oh, did you watch Sunday's episode? And I'd, like, go, oh, um, no, I haven't caught up on it yet. And she'd talk about it and she'd tell me how it ended. Or, like, she'd recommend a book <laughs> and she'd tell me the ending. But I wouldn't Oh, isn't stop there a line her. in it about... Yeah. I'd uh, let you ruin... Let you ruin the, the endings of yeah. my favourite shows, yeah. That is a direct line of like oh. she used to ruin the end <laughs> but she was my grandma so i couldn't say shut up grandma so i just sit there and think well i don't need to watch it now i don't need to read that book now because i know <laughs> how it ends <laughs> and i just accept it and like yeah they came to my house every single christmas my grandma and granddad and then that first christmas without my grandma there was a it was a definite shift in christmas yeah. day it was completely different and she was very very missed around the table so we miss you around the crib, table christmas day is a direct yeah thing from my life i didn't expect it so i didn't think people I'd connect to it that much because it was so specific to my life and my yeah. loss. But what I've weirdly found is it's actually the song that people relate to the most out of anything I've ever yeah. written, even though it's got those kind of lines in. Um, oh, like literally, and that blows my mind that yeah. people can take something that, like you say, like the checks the dock, uh, the lock on the door yeah. is specific to you. that is how your mum and dad's relationship works. But people can connect to that so deeply, and yeah. I think that is just one of the most beautiful things about songwriting. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of similar to you. Like I started writing when I was younger, really bad songs. I was like 13, that I'd sing with my cousin in his bedroom, but I didn't start taking it serious until I was like 19. Yeah. Um, and even by then, like there was almost this like embarrassment around it. Like I didn't want people to know that that was how I felt about things. So I'd be like, oh yeah, it's like country and it's like stories and like yeah. it's not real. And, and uh, I'd kind of like talk over it because I was a bit embarrassed to play the songs for people, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I get that. And as you get a bit older to be able to actually share it and say like, no, this is how I feel. And I think you feel the same way too. And how yeah. people say it to you is, is just a massive compliment. Oh, massively. And like another thing like I'm proper fan girl, I love about your songwriting <laughs> is um, your chord changes. <laughs> I'm a proper basic guitarist with like four no, chords to my name. <laughs> um, but I love your chord changes, they're always unusual. 
like I feel like when we write together as well you do something I'm like what's that like writing <laughs> I, I go to Luke and I'm like can you demo the guitar for this because I that's don't just know what that that's is that's me and me eternal <laughs> quest to be Randy Newman I think and, <laughs> and getting maybe 25% of the way there but I will take that 25% um, yeah I just I mean it kind of all that stuff is just fully born out of just loving those kinds of songwriters like yeah Obviously, I grew up listening to a lot of country, but a lot of like 70s singer songwriter stuff as well. Um, so a lot of Randy Newman, Stephen Bishop, Andrew Gold, a lot of early Elton John mm. stuff. Um, and just like all of them, just like really rich chords, like really like romantic mm. sounding songs. I just absolutely yeah. love. I love it. Like I'd like, <clears throat> like in, I keep referencing Learn to Be Lonely, but the chord change where you just don't expect it but it works so well yeah <laughs> and your ear goes oh that even i mean we wrote that song maybe four or five years ago and even when i'm playing the first chorus live now i've played that song so many times and going for that one chord that you're not expecting yeah. i'm still like but surely it can't be this now <laughs> like my hand goes there and i'm like like there's always a bit of a, oh, yeah. I hope this is the right chord. Because <laughs> it just feels so weird to put it there. But that's, yeah, that's all the stuff that makes me so happy. And I yeah. do definitely need to be pulled back on sometimes because <laughs> I just do that all the time. And it's like, could you just maybe write a song with like, a, I mean, I've definitely got the the G and the C songs because I love them dearly as well. Yeah. But every now and again, I'll just, if you, I was left to my own devices, I'd just be sad. <laughs> writing the same song over and over again I feel like I'm like that with piano like if you sit me at a piano to write it's all in minor it's sad yeah. like I'm maybe that's what I need to piano. I can't write I need to break good minor that. songs maybe I need to do it on a I, piano I'm the opposite like even my mum says to me like she like I love my mum she's like number one fan but she's so honest and like she'll say that. Like, oh, you need that. she'll be like you should write something happy <laughs> <laughs> you should write something upbeat <laughs> I'm like Okay, and there's so much then. context to that <laughs> yeah. one sentence as she, well. She, like she's saying, like I'm sick of the sad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, like give me something to dance to. My mum, she actually met your mum at um at Buckle and Boots because I feel like your mum was the ultimate festival mum. She year. loves the festival. My mum. I was hanging, hanging, and I had to help my mum and my auntie and my cousin all put the tents up. Disclaimer: I can't put my own tent up, so I don't know what I was doing getting involved. <laughs> So I got involved in that, and as I was like, walking back, your mum had like a full catering system set up. She was oh, like, yeah, full you want bacon butter? I yeah. was like, yes, I want a bacon yeah. butter. I don't even, was I, I think I wasn't even there, was I? I, feel I like, had yeah, a, I feel like it was the day after you played. We played, and then we had to go and do another festival. Yeah, so they and were And my mum just stayed and fed the, the whole of the festival. Mom. Oh, she fed everyone, it was yeah. fantastic. I was she like, absolutely yeah. loves it. And your brother must have like taken that on as well, because I remember one year at FSA, me and my two friends were camping, again, very hungover. Came to tent, it was like, you girls want a bacon butter? I was like, always. Yeah. And then it was like, knock, knock, this arm came through with a plate of bacon butters for us. I was like, I didn't even know if it was your brother at the time. I was like, was, <laughs> this guy's amazing, who is that? And then he was like, I'm Laura. I was like, oh, the catering family, yeah. of course. Yeah, if there's a bacon <laughs> butter going around at a festival, the probably the surname's <laughs> Oaks. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was fantastic. I was like, that is what you need. Like, if I'm at a festival, all I take by ways of food are like, you packs of crisps, like Tesco's free for a pound, packs of sweets, and some. <laughs> That's also me. Some gin and tonic cans that are warm by the time you drink them. <laughs> this is also me because I'm from a family of, you know, people who travel with full professional kitchens <laughs> in their camping gear. So I, that stuff just happens. Yeah. And then if I go to a festival and, right. and they're not with me, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you have to bring that with you. <laughs> that doesn't just appear. Oh, right, okay. And then I'll be eating. Yeah, like yeah, I, I I eat terrible at festivals, but you know we, we live and we learn. I we do, learn, yeah. yeah. No, we we just live. <laughs> <laughs> just that. That's the that's the more fun just bit, live. anyway. <laughs> I, I love your family, like you say. They're so musical. When we came to Luke's party, uh, yeah, I remember going. Home, I was like, Mum, it was like it was like the Von Trapps. Like it was it was everything you'd love. Mum, we're like, did they do that all the time? Should we go up for a night? I was like. No, no mum, it was a party. Absolutely. Like my mum, my mum and my auntie, like you've, I think you've met my mum and my auntie, she has, we call her two beers because everywhere we go, she orders two small beers. 
Um, oh yeah, my mum will do this as well. Like she would never be seen drinking a pint, but she'll have two halves at the oh, same time. Oh yeah, yeah. And, like when, when we go on holiday, <laughs> no matter what time it is, it was like, oh, we'll have a we'll have a full English. Uh, she'll have a toast and uh, two small beers, please. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we go, two I small love that. beers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they they love a night out and love Liverpool. Like Luke says to me every Christmas mix it up because every birthday or Christmas or Mother's Day I just like pay for my mum a hotel and we just go to Liverpool for the night because she loves it oh, I love it. and Luke's like mix it up I'm like why no why though if that's what she loves no and can you please let me know the next time that happens because I'm going to come I'll have two small beers with me I'll have my mum same and, um, exclusively for one night only I'll just be on two halves <laughs> all night yeah <laughs> and um I was telling them about about the party and they were like, we need to go for a night. I was like, no, it was it was a party. Like that's not just what happens in the club. That's night. also just a Wednesday in is my actually, family as well. Like any given Well, I feel like Wednesday. what I'm taking away from this <laughs> is I need to be my mum and my auntie two small beers <laughs> and Ishaz up to up and have, yes. have a night out with your family. I mean, that's Liverpool. reason in my family, like that would be reason enough to be like, oh, we'll just have a party then. Dade's so, bringing her mum, so we must just we have definitely a party. Out. We love yeah. Liverpool. We go all the time. I went a couple of months ago, and we went to Only Fools and Horses Bar. Oh, I've not been to this, but I oh have my heard about God. it. Is it amazing? Have you watched Only Fools and Horses? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right, then you're going to love it. So all the cocktails are themed, right? Yes. And I'm going to show some video evidence afterwards. I might attach it to the end of this. You can go <laughs> to the bar... And do the do the fall do the fall through. There's like a beam. There's like an inflatable bag that you fall on, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Stell Boys car, you can get in and have your photos in car. <laughs> Right. They have open mic nights on Thursday, so we went for open mic nights. It sounds nights. like the best place in the whole so world. So funny. They've like they've got Dell's bed in there. You can get on Lemon <laughs> Right, so it's, it is so funny. So we went on shock one of my mum's Christmas presents. We went to Liverpool. We oh, went the there. We had the best night. We played at the open mic, and then we found an Irish bar around the corner, and then went in there. And then I think I got up on Sand Country Roads. The guy who was singing because you know, so amazing. Honestly, we had the best night, and Luke was like, "Surely you're tired of going to the same place all the time?" But oh, I love it. I put me and Luke a little padlock on the gate at one point, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> Very upsetting. <laughs> oh, on the dock. You yeah, can do the, the padlock dock. thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. You went back and actually looked for it. Been back many times, could never find it. I mean, that's dedication. There's quite a lot there. We put it, we've been together about, um, he'll deny this, but we'd been together a month. We were already in love. Um, I feel I like I'm getting tour. so such an insight, like <laughs> deeper than I've ever got in your relationship. I'm loving this. I feel like a psychologist. Continue. You can dance it. So we've been together about a month and I did a tour with um, Emma Moore and Amy Westerday. So we did yeah. like a writer's tour on like four or five dates. And one of the dates was in Liverpool. We were finishing the tour. So Luke yeah. came to the, I think he came to the Leeds date and uh, at that point no one knew we were together either so oh. i were having to just be like oh yeah luke thomas has just come to support but then when i were drunk i were like kissing up on his cheek and i took him like he was obviously staying at my house but so were the girls so I, at the end i had to be like <laughs> yeah we're together <laughs> not just brought him back to stay at my house <laughs> so um after that he said oh i'll see you afterwards and then it came to the liverpool date and he said oh where are you staying i'm just gonna book an hotel because his parents were away. it was like i'm literally on my own why would i stay home i might as well come to the liverpool date it's like yes yeah, you should so we came up and stayed uh, for the tour day. And then the next day, I was like, I want to go down to the docks. And you know those um, swan pedlos? Yes. <laughs> I made him rent one of those with me. I've That's got photographic evidence amazing. for this. Him in his shades and his little life jacket peddling this swan around the docks. Right, can that be the thumbnail of this episode <laughs> of the podcast? And then I went and bought a little love heart padlock and I was like, let's sign this and put it on the padlock. He was like, no. That is no. very I was like, cute. Yeah, this is cute. And he was like, mm. Do you know what I love? So <laughs> obviously him. <laughs> this is a podcast, but also a YouTube video. So people watching it on YouTube will be able to see it. But Luke was, who is behind the camera, was very, very invested in this before we started. And he's just slowly edged away <laughs> from the camera as this story has been Luke's told. Luke's stop getting involved in these podcasts. He's like, you just show me up week after week. Is, is this why you come? <laughs> just so you can see what she's saying about you? You have to just come and filming. check what secrets everyone's finding out. <laughs> I love Liverpool. Do you find 
that when you go home your accent gets stronger yeah <laughs> i mean i don't know i'm like very a lot stronger it was kind of it was never really strong anyway i don't know what happened i do feel like you've got quite a soft little puddle yeah accent. and it kind of it was it was stronger than it is now um when i was younger but it was never like i don't think it was ever like as as strong as like a lot of my families i don't know yeah. i don't know why that was um but it's definitely yeah it's definitely diluted a lot in the last 10 years because obviously i've not lived there but when i go home it's it becomes a whole other language, basically. <laughs> I'm surprised. Actually, I'm in me. I'm in me neutral speaking voice <laughs> neutral at the minute. Sorry. Yeah, but I've just obviously been in Liverpool, so I'm surprised you can understand anything I'm saying. I can definitely understand it because I've had it. I've had accent. me scouse topped up because I was there <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I have to go every now and again and top my accent up. Do you when you're on the phone? Do you change like stronger? Yeah, because I've been like with friends. My mum's phoned me. So spoken to me mom in and everything relaxes as well. Like it's not, a, <laughs> it's not mean? in my face. Sorry, not like it's a conscious, it's not a conscious thing that I like, I changed my accent, but obviously if I'm around people that don't yeah. have my accent, I'll tidy I'll up just subconsciously change it a little bit so I can be like better understood. Yeah. Um, and don't have to repeat what I'm saying like three times because no one can understand what I'm talking about. But when... I'm on the phone to my mom, just like my whole face is just like, oh, <laughs> this is what me, this is what a relaxed face feels like and a relaxed like neck feels like because I'm just talking like I'm supposed to. Um, and then I'll get off the phone like I was in a, a recording session actually a couple of years ago and I've been on the phone to my mom for 10 minutes and then put the phone down. And Alex, the guy I was in the session with, was just like, what was that? <laughs> Like, what just happened? Why did you become a totally different person? Like I'd been speaking a different language, but it's, it's so hard. I, I feel like, I mean, you must have it as well. Like when you're around Nobody your family. Yeah. Nobody. Um, but like, I get what you mean. Like you try to like tidy it up around. Yeah. Like, and it's not like even a conscious thing. Playing. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, if you're spending t like time with a short periods of time as well of like with mm. lots of different people. Um, and a lot of me friends are, from well from all over the place but like yeah. i went to uni even though i went to uni in leeds was around a lot of southern people yeah um so it's kind of just like formed into this odd cut people can sort of go oh i'm you're kind of i'm guessing from somewhere in merseyside yeah they always like cast a wide net in case they're family <laughs> yeah. they're just like are you from the northwest of England <laughs> anywhere somewhere and then I like kind of pinpoint it. pinpoint it for them um yeah but it definitely goes a lot stronger yeah when I go home you've, you've been on tour recently with Tom Walker yeah so when you're touring like that and you're going all around yeah you find that like, you have to like tidy it up around the like the crew who you're touring with yourself or just like if you're out speaking to people in like the different cities with I think it kind of it naturally does that thing where it like I will again subconsciously just like kind of like de-regionalize my accent a little bit <laughs> yeah. because in that band as well the band and crew like we're all from all over the place so yeah. um we've got like York London Welsh a couple of Liverpool guys actually which is lovely uh some people from Newcastle some are from Lincoln so like we're from like all, all over the country um so it does tend to just like keep it just where neutral nice and neutral <laughs> yeah and again it's not even a thing i i notice happening yeah it's just kind of it's just formed into this weird what even is it accent well, over the I years how was the tom walk at all it was really good we finished uh on a couple of days ago uh and it was it was amazing to be back on tour it's the first like full length tour I've done since Giggins come back after the pandemic right, okay. so I've done shows and festivals and stuff um but that was the the first like full it was I think we were away for like two and a half weeks and just doing it night after night yeah and there's just nothing can replace that that when you get to do it every single night yeah um 
and it was just, it was just so nice. I saw back some and doing of it. your pictures as well. You're on yeah. the electric as well now, aren't you? Yeah, on electric yeah, guitar. So, so back and vocals, electric and acoustic guitar. Yeah, which is is so nice and kind of I'm so, I mean they're all, they're just absolutely lovely to work with, and it's so nice to be to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, and what's nice as well, it's a totally different style of music to the yeah. stuff I write. And it's like different audiences. And different audiences, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, I started singing and I started playing because I just love music mm. in whatever form. Yeah, regardless um, of it's genre. In, regardless of genre. So like country stuff will always make me so happy. Um, but if it's generally like stripping all of that like genre and style stuff away, just if you can spend your time around musicians that love what they do, and you love playing and singing with them like it's just I don't care what what yeah. labels on it like it's I You're just, in. Ab- <laughs> I'm, I'm in yeah count me in <laughs> um yeah so I feel very lucky to get to do the two things side by side as yeah. well that's really cool Definitely. yeah so what else have you got coming up this year um so I've got some festivals coming up with mm-hmm. my stuff um so we are doing I'm doing a solo show in Cottingham for Cottingham Folk oh, Festival wow. actually on Thursday the 25th of August. Um, I'm also taking my uh, Laura Oaks hosts in the round, which is at like so far just been for radio yeah. um, on Countryline Radio. Um, that is, we're going to be bringing that to the British Country Music Festival in September wow. uh, and hosting live, a live races around there, which I'm really excited about yeah. um, getting to do. Um, and then loads more writing, obviously. I'm always writing. And then hopefully release some stuff. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, um, definitely. But it's just, you know, since kind of the industry's opened back up again, I'm just loving doing it all. Yeah, I, I don't even care what it. it is. I'm just like, yes, <laughs> I will write. Yes, I will sing. Like, what is it? I don't care. Yeah. Like, just let me yeah. sing and write. Um, so just, yeah, hopefully new stuff coming very soon um but looking forward to festival yeah. season very very much i think it was obviously a great that festival season came back a little bit last year but this year is like the first year of it in full swing no restrictions yeah it was a little season. bit tentative still last year because yeah. obviously everyone still had to be very careful yeah. um so yeah i'm looking forward to it us getting our fares proper like not needing to be so careful yeah kind of where people can just like have a good time without yeah. all of that worry hanging over them um so yeah i can't wait oh yeah absolutely we'll have to definitely try to get over to cottingham as well because uh, we don't live too far from oh yes i also want to see if so i think the first time we played cottingham folk festival um the chippy there thought we were a lot more famous than we <laughs> were so took our picture because we have <laughs> Anyone that plays there, that's like famous. They take pictures and put them on the wall. And because we said we were playing at the festival, they were like, oh, let's take your picture. Max Spielman's over the road. We're going to get it developed tomorrow. So it's me, Luke, my drummer, and Pete on guitar, um, all stood outside. And someone <laughs> sent me an actual picture of it. Like it was there. Like our photo is right, now hanging up behind the counter of a play. chippy. So I've basically, I'm. I mean, it's a great gig. I'm looking forward to playing the gig. But 50% of it was like, I really want to see of me pictures <laughs> still behind the wall of the gym. <laughs> so if anyone's from the Cottingham area and is listening to this, yeah, please do let, let me know. Get to the chippy. Yeah. Definitely. So well, I'll definitely be making a stop there. Well, I might see you on the stage. I might see you in the chippy. We don't know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for having uh, me. On What's the G&T? And yeah. And Loved it. I know you had a nightmare journey, but hopefully the... This large measured gin made up for it. Yeah, I've completely <laughs> forgot. I mean, I th- the gin's definitely made me forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, if you are listening on YouTube, please do subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, please do press the follow button. Go and check out Laura Rooks online. Uh, she's got music up and she's on Instagram and Facebook as well. And we will see you all again soon. And that is a wrap on episode four. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of What's the G and T. Huge thank you to Laura Oaks for coming and joining me this week. 
You can find out more about Laura if you go and check her out on Instagram at Laura Oaks Music, on Facebook at Laura Oaks, and of course her music is up online on Spotify, Apple, and everywhere where you can download or stream music, so make sure you go and check that out. Huge thank you to Luke Barrett for producing this week's episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button or the follow button if you are on Spotify and Apple. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you again on the next episode.